Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Alright, pack one, pick one. What are we looking at? We're looking at a robber of the rich. How good is this card for limited? It's pretty decent. I mean, 2 mana, 2-2, two, two, reach haste. Might not seem like reach is super important on a 2-2, but there are quite a few 1-1 one, one flyers in the set that this can block. And get in a few early points of damage. This is definitely not a bomb for limited, but it's an okay card. If we can draft a nice aggressive deck. What else do we have? The Owl is pretty good too, if we can draft a nice synergistic uh, artifact based deck. We've got uh, Tactician as a nice white aggro card. And that's about it. Like the entire bottom half of this pack is pretty unexciting. So we're looking at Tactician, Owl and Robber. I think I would take those all over the Wonder Mare, which is a two color commitment. Whereas the Owl is kind of a two color commitment as well. Although, could potentially play it in a heavy blue or heavy white deck as well. Don't mind trying out a robber. I kind of also just need it for my collection, since I don't think I have any of them yet. So that's a good excuse to try it out. Alright, well, we could have had Double Owl, which would have been a nice start to a draft. But the Mad Ratter is very strong if we can keep enabling it. So that probably means we want to pair it with blue. So we get the blue card draw. Other good cards in the pack, so of course the uh, Owl, Savvy Hunter is great, if we can provide it enough food. And then the Trebuchet for a, a red aggressive deck. There's usually plenty of Knights, although the Robber is not a Knight. Can make a case for Mad Ratter to just stay on color, a Robber would still be fine in a more aggressively slanted blue-red draw 2 deck. Uh, the individually most powerful card in this pack is probably the Savvy Hunter. Although it's close with the Owl, depending on, of course, how much uh, synergy you can have with Hunter or Owl, respectively. But uh, yeah, all these cards are great, so we'll stick to the Ratter, stay on color here. Alright, got a couple options here. So had we taken Double Owl, we would probably be looking at something like a Didn't Say Please, maybe. Had we taken the Savvy Hunter in the second pack, we would have a tough choice between Trail and the Bognotti. Probably leaning Trail, given that we went with the red cards. I could take just an aggressive red card in Rimrock Knight. I could take the blue card draw spell in Unexplained Vision. Although these types of cards we can usually get pretty late. Like there's still a bit of card draw outside of blue of course to combo with the Mad Ratter. Could end up with a couple of golden eggs to trigger this. And I can play those in any deck. So we don't have to be blue-red, but it is where the Ratter, of course, is going to be at its best. And we are seeing a couple of blue cards, so it's possible blue is open. But it's a bit early to tell since just an uncommon and a rare missing. Yeah, I'm not too worried about a rogue synergy with the Robber of the Rich. I don't think I'm going to build around that too much. But I'm happy to build around the Mad Ratter. Like, red-green is usually more aggressive, so the Trail of Crumbs is not going to be great there. So I would probably take the Rimrock Knight if I wanted to draft a more aggressive deck. But then the Mad Ratter is going to be kind of poor. So Vision makes the most sense if we're trying to work towards the Blue-Red Draw 2 deck. Even though you would prefer cheaper cantrips. And Vision 3rd pick is not particularly exciting. What's the most individually powerful card in this pack? It's probably between the Trail and the Bognaughty. And they can both be quite good. But they do require a pretty specific deck. I mean, the Rimrock Knight can be okay regardless, even in the Blue-Red Draw 2 deck, just as kind of an aggressive adventure creature. The Blue-Red deck is usually more aggressively slanted anyway. And if I don't end up Blue-Red, then at least it's on color. So I could just take the Rimrock Knight as kind of a safe pick, even if it's not particularly exciting. Yeah, well, let's stick to red. Well, this could have been a third Arcanus Owl. Definitely regretting that now. Well, there is a Witching Well for the Blue-Red Draw 2 deck. Probably too late to switch over to the Owl. There's no red card in the pack. Nothing else too exciting outside of the Owl and the Witching Well. Like, Queen of Ice is okay, Paladin's fine, Forever Young I'll play. Yeah, let's try the Well. 
All right, could take a second well. Cauldron could be okay too. Not too excited about Frogify, but it's definitely playable if we need some removal. Don't need to take the Ogre Errant very highly. So probably between Cauldron and Well. Don't have any removal yet. So maybe I should take a Cauldron here. Also not super committed to blue yet, just have a single Well. Ooh, Heraldic Banner could be kind of a payoff for sticking to maybe a Monorad type deck. I <laughs> could even name Black to go with the Rats for my Mad Ratter, but that seems unlikely. Otherwise Wolverine would be good for the draw 2 deck, or Ginger Brute would be good for a more aggressive deck. I think I'll take the Banner over Wolverine. And yeah, I mean, Ratcap plus Banner is kind of a combo. Dwarven Mine if we want to be Monorad would be fine, Ginger Brute as well. Secret Keeper if we want to set up some Mill shenanigans. But let's try and draft an aggressive deck here. So there's a chance I can wheel a trebuchet, even though it's not super likely. So both claim the firstborn and barge in could be fine additions if we want to be some sort of monorad deck. Crystal Slipper, I guess, could also make the cuts. So I've got a few options. Yeah, Tracker could be serviceable if we want to be Gruel aggro. Although if we can draft a solid to monocolored aggro deck, it's going to be a lot more consistent. Plus we have the banner as a payoff for sticking to red as much as possible. And there's some nice hybrid to red cards that we can also pick up if we're mono red. So we already have a Rimrock Knight as a combat trick, but I definitely don't mind having a couple extra. Claim can have a lot of upside, maybe combined with Fling, but usually the thing you want to steal has more than uh, three converted mana costs. So let's take a barge in since I probably can get more slippers later easily. So another rat cap looks okay. Overclaim, Ginger Brute also an option, even the dummy could make the cut. Although the two artifact creatures not the most synergistic with banner. So I don't mind rat cap and I kind of focus on picking up more pump spells in general. It's also a knight for potential knight synergies. All right, Amberth Paladin, pretty late here, 10th pick. So even though we kind of missed the boat on Triple Owl, red does seem pretty open. And there's a slipper if we want it. Could even make an argument for Secret Keeper here, but... Eh, let's just stick to Monorad here. And even a dummy could be playable. Alright, so I'm looking more and more like a Monorad deck here. Hoping for, I guess, Torbran would be the dream. But any of those powerful multicolor or like hybrids, red cards that we could cast in Monorad would be great. Just more good 2-drops, a couple more pump spells, some cheap burn spells would be nice as well, so we'll see. I don't think I'm gonna take uh, 7 Dwarfs first pick, but if I wheel it, I might pick it up. I could take another Scalding Cauldron, that seems acceptable. Golden Egg to go with a Mad Ratter could also be reasonable. Although there's a chance I don't end up playing this, since uh, it is pretty underwhelming if we're gonna be Monorad. So let's take a cauldron. Not an exciting first pick, but not seeing any red cards. Reef Soul, Glass Casket, those are both good. I mean, I could still pivot back into the blue-red draw 2 deck. The problem is that there's no exciting blue cards. Frogify, not particularly exciting here. And uh, this is not really a deck that wants to keep up Didn't Say Please. Although it does synergize with the Witching Well in a way. If we take a Reef Soul and get the Steel Claw Lance, we could have a nice red-black knight aggro deck. If I take the Glass Casket and get a few of the, the Flying Knights, then I could have a nice red-white aggro deck. But I might also wield the Venerable Knights, in which case Casket makes more sense. So I'm not sure here, it's close between the two removal spells, but I'll stick to white. Second Mad Ratter, but there's also Searing Barrage, which is probably the pick. Like, the Ratter's only really gonna be great in blue-red. I don't have any card draw besides a Witching Well. So I'll probably just gotta take the removal spell here. Alright, no red cards, so... Could take the Guide Mother or the Unicorn for red-white, potentially. Also saw a couple out muscles pass by. But Guide Mother's okay in an aggressive deck. Unicorn gives us a bit more beef on the ground. 
could also take one of the colorless cards like the suit or the dummy and still try and stick to mono red. Like I have one blue card, I have one white card and the rest could still fit into mono red even though there's some debatable cards in here. Like the Mat Rider is not going to be great in mono red. Don't necessarily want to play Gargoyle. Slippers, medium but could be okay with rat caps. And a Prophet is also not a great 6 drop. Yeah, Guide Mother plus Rat Cap is a lot of damage. Now we're seeing uh, the Into the Story. So if I had taken a couple of those Merfolk Secret Keepers, then Into the Story for the Blue Red deck would have been quite strong. Instead, I'm considering taking the Seven Dwarves, which, uh, you know, it's not exciting, but if I get a couple, it can maybe save the draft. So Thrill Possibility would have been a card draw spell to go with the Radars. Probably just looking at Rimrock Knight and Ginger Brute here instead. Just to pick up some more nice aggressive creatures. Knight great with the Rat Cap as well. Ginger Brute gives us a bit of much needed evasion, which our deck can use. But the Rimrock Knight is also just a fine 2 drop. I'll take the Knight. Not a Rat Cap versus a second Guide Mother. Some okay blue cards here too Vandal, Sanctuary. These two are great. I think our deck probably needs a red cap, stick to mono red for now, and then if we get more white cards I can still potentially be red-white, but for now just taking more red caps to go with our pump spells or banners seems okay. Haven't cast this card yet, up to three target creatures can block, destroy any of them that are walls, there's not too many walls in the set but uh, a falter effect like this can be useful. Alternatively, I could take the weapon rack, which does play well with the rat caps. I think I'll go with the rack. If I pick up some late um, ginger brutes, then the weapon rack also gets better. Take another dwarves. So two out of seven at the moment. Uh, nothing here that I want. Another dummy could make the cuts. Is it better than broom? Do I have any synergy with this? I guess it plays well with the cauldrons. Dummy is a knight for any potential knight synergies. So they're both kind of mana sinks in a way. But outside of the cauldrons, I don't have an easy way of sacrificing any permanence. So it's not going to be amazing either way. I'll take a broom. Got our dummy anyway. And another weapon rack, which I might actually play. Alright, so our deck needs a lot of help. Currently it's pretty bad, not gonna lie. So we're looking more and more like just mono reds. So picking up some more seven dwarves I guess would be fine. Picking up a couple more cheap removal spells like the Scorching Dragonfire would help. A couple more pump spells to boost up the rat caps would be useful. And uh, some of those heavy red payoff cards would be nice as well. Alright, Sir Kara is definitely one of those payoff cards. Uh, I would love to wield the Ginger Brutes, Ogre Errands, Carriage would also be serviceable, but uh, we'll take the Pinger that also draws cards. Alright, well, I guess we're in. Like, I'm pretty reasonably likely to wield the Seven Dwarves, so I could speculate on something else, like this uh, Carriage, for example. Carriage would be decent in my deck, I think, giving me a bit of extra late game. The chances of wielding Seven Dwarves, I would say, is like at least 80%. It's much more exciting if we actually wheel it instead of take it here. So let's uh, live on the edge here. All right, nice. Ooh, Scorching Dragonfire versus another Seven Dwarves. Are we wheeling this dwarves as well? This one I'm gonna give about 65% chance to wheel. But there's some pretty good cards left here. Come on, like there's an Owl, Pixie, Tactician, those should all be gone. Funeral's probably gonna be gone, Paladin. Then it gets a bit uh, closer. Yeah, let's take the Dragonfire. Yeah, another Rimrock Knight could be fine. And not gonna play any of these most likely. Don't have much synergy with the Wolverine. Maybe take one of these as a finisher. Alright, so these are going to be some exciting packs on the wheel. 
to see if we wield the dwarves. Nothing here that I want, just take the uncommon, I guess. Trebuchet and Joust are both actually quite good. So how many knights do we have? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we have a lot of knights. How many would survive a fight with a Joust? It's especially good with a Ratcap if it gains a plus two power. In terms of removal, I now have two cauldrons, barrage, scorching dragonfire, and we also have a couple pump spells, especially the Rimrock Knights and the Barge in to kinda force some blocks and blow your house down if we want to play that too. And this also helps against flyers, which is not uh, irrelevant. So I kind of like the trebuchet here. Alright, Ginger Brutes, pretty happy with that, don't need a third rack. Alright, so the next pack is where we get the first Dwarves, potentially. Now Errands versus Brute is another close pick. Don't mind the Brute, just to kind of lower the curve of the deck a little bit. Although Errands would be pretty decent in my deck too. I don't have a ton of 4 drops, I'm probably not playing the Ratter. Probably not playing the Prophet, so we can start making some cuts. Gargoyle can easily go. Not sure about the Broom or the Slipper. So this could both go. And this is kind of where I'm at. Maybe don't play this. So it could be a 16 land, 24 spells deck. Could use some more like high toughness creatures to block as well. So maybe it is the Errant over the Brutes. Alright, we'll try it. Uh oh. We didn't wield the first Dwarves. Are we going to wield the second one? If we don't wield the second one, then I'm probably just not going to play the Dwarves at all. And those will be two easy cuts. We wield the second one. How does that happen? We didn't wield the first one, but we wield the second one. These bots. Alright, so now do I play them? I've got three of them. That's like borderline playable. Yeah, if I had two, I would definitely cut them. Three is like, maybe... We don't have a ton of card draw, so that's kind of a strike against it. If we had some more, like, cantrips, we would be more likely to draw multiples. Yeah, I think we can just cut them. They're also not even knights, so they don't synergize with a trebuchet. So it might just be this. And yeah, I wanted 16 lands. So, Slipper could be fine to go with the rat caps. Bit of extra haste doesn't hurt. And then this is kind of our interaction, if you will. Decent chunk of two drops, despite cutting the dwarves. The rat caps, especially, pretty nice with all the pump effects. We've got two racks, a banner, and a slipper to pump up the rat caps. Aaron to make some stuff menacing, so the rack plays well with rat caps and the ginger brutes. And then we've got some decent curve toppers too. Could potentially still play 17 lands, but we do also have a banner that makes mana. And the deck can function on 3 lands for the first couple turns pretty easily. Blow your house down could be a finisher. Don't think the shambling suit's gonna be great. Do have a couple artifacts, but these are usually gonna get sacrificed. I guess a slipper also counts. Trebuchet is also an artifact. So yeah, the, the shambling suit could actually be serviceable. Uh, not sure what to cut for it though. Do I need barge in when I have triple rimrock knight? Maybe not. This does give trample, which is definitely relevant. Uh, I do have a couple of humans that don't gain trample. So maybe I can just cut this and make room for an extra creature. And then I still have triple rimrock knight as uh, pump spells. So this hand is good if we can draw some lands. We do have a couple of our more expensive cards in hand. So on the draw, I think we can keep. All right, I collector, I can block with my trebuchet at some point.
Oh boy, Spectre Shriek. Might take the trebuchet, might take... Who knows? Took my uh, rat cap instead. Would have been pretty good with a slipper. Yeah, the mill decks are maybe a bit too popular in Arena right now. Alright. <laughs> well, we had uh, two weapon racks. Glad one got milled. So now I can weapon rack the dummy so it can attack past the collector. Alright, well, so far so good. A lot of two drops, so even if we miss a couple land drops, we can still make some plays. Including Robber of the Rich, which would have been nicer on the play than on the draw, but still pretty decent. And I do get to play Cauldron turn 1 to start emptying my hands for the Robber, so that's nice. Pretty effective blocker in this situation. So another mill deck. So the robber's not going to do much robbing at the moment. Ooh, that's a cool animation. First time seeing it. It's an aggressive chum block. That's uh, acceptable. I could play Slipper Equip, but I'm probably better off just playing out a creature here. Probably the Rimrock Knight still can trade for the Queen of Ice, even though I'm likely to just use a Cauldron. Scissor opponent Mono Blue. If they're plays Queen of Ice, I'm just sacking the Cauldron. Now it gets more interesting. So they only have uh, three cards in hand, so it's unlikely that my robber gets to steal anything. Although now I could preemptively play two cards so the robber can steal, which might be the play. So that means I have to play, let's say, dummy plus slipper, hold the Rimrock Knight as a trick. Like, Ogre Errant might honestly be the better play, but going for the double two drop enables me to use my robber. The problem with robbing them now is that, like, it's gonna be a while before I can even cast a spell. It might just be a land, in which case it does nothing. So maybe I should just play the errant first. Because errant sets up the Rimrock Knight perfectly. Opponent keeping up for mana, so I'm guessing they have a didn't say please in hand. I could play Slipper. They probably counter it, otherwise Slipper on Rimrock Knights would be a way to get past the Secret Keeper. And if they counter this, I can use a Rimrock Knight instead. So all can attack. And basically trade for their board here. Mm -hmm. 
Sir Carol's a nice leftover here. Although Sanctuary can get them back uh, Counterspell for next turn. Still have a Cauldron chilling, waiting to kill the Queen of Ice. And Robber's actually pretty interesting too here, since that could exile the top card potentially. So they've got to be careful. Queen of Ice. And Tome Raider, so that draws the opts. Fair enough. Fifth land is great. So I have a couple of options. I can play land, play dummy, activate cauldron, kill queen, attack, and then robber gets to trigger. That seems good. Or I can play land, play Sir Kara, but then only the ogre errant gets to attack. So I could either start gaining value from Sir Kara or from the robber. If I want to play around didn't say please, then maybe playing Sir Kara now is better. But getting a hidden with the robber is nice too, plus I still develop with a dummy. So this one's close. I think I'll play dummy. Alright, just a land for now. Opponent down to eight. I've got a pretty good board presence. And I've got uh, 18 cards remaining, so they're still pretty far from milling me. Alright. That's uh, four more cards gone. Ooh, banner. Yeah, I can play the Rimrock Knight first in case they're holding out a counterspell. Yeah, I probably don't want to play Sir Kara into four open mana anyway. So I guess we'll start here. And if the banner resolves, then my opponent can't really afford to double block dummy, because then they're taking a ton of damage from my red creatures. So I think we're okay to send everyone. They have a bounce spell, so tiny. Alright. So only get in for three. But still have a pretty good board state here, with uh, Sir Kara as leftovers, and yeah, that does it. Alright, interesting game, had a couple interesting decisions along the way. But I like how we played around the first uh, didn't say please. The turn where I attacked with a robber and triggered it versus playing Sir Kara was very close. Maybe playing Sir Kara would have been better, but uh, it worked out. On the play with a reasonable hand if I can pick up a couple lands, a rat cap and ginger brood both playing well with the weapon rack. Don't think we can really mulligan. But uh, the hands might uh, fail if we don't pick up some lands. Alright, so far so good. Nice aggressive starts. Oof, youthful knight. That blocks all my stuff. But at least I'll be able to weapon rack on the rat cap next turn. Yeah, we would much rather play against the slow dirtily decks than uh, a white tech. Two toughness. Doesn't matter for the rat cap. And the next turn barrage is going to be pretty sweet too. So we drew the lands we needed. Castle Ardenvale plus uh, provisions is going to be a tough one to beat too. Yeah, I guess we'll kill the walker now. I think I'm still going all in on this rat cap for now. At least one more counter. The last one's probably going to go on the ginger brutes. Wow. Alright, that was a beating. A 
Kind of had the perfect curve, drew all the lines we needed. Looks decent, even uh, on the play with the cauldron, so this robber is uh, very likely to exile some cards. Alright, still acceptable. Hey, out muscle. It's pretty good. Ooh, they're red, so they could kill my robber now. No, don't do it. Oh, wow. Bone Crusher Giant as well. That's, uh, that's a pretty good card. So I guess Shambling Suit makes more sense than Red Cap for now. It's gonna be a 2 3. Dummy can make it bigger. Although, is it? So my opponent's likely playing Giant next turn, and I can kill it with a Cauldron. And then suit would only deal one damage as opposed to two from red cap. Alright, we had a great start, but uh, this bone crusher giant just completely uh, killed all the momentum we built up. At least we exiled an out muscle, so there's that. I like the little arrow symbol. Ratcap Raiders. Yeah, that's a pretty good blocker too. I guess I'll take it and attack into it. We'll see here. That can potentially hit pretty hard. Yeah, I guess I'm okay trading Ratcap. I don't have any like particular synergy with it. And it's not a guarantee to actually kill the Raiders next turn if I keep it on defense. So point probably takes it. And then I get to play Shambling Suits, which at least blocks the tracker. So they might just send a 4-3 Raiders and then we can try and race, we'll see. But yeah, it feels like we're pretty far behind. Attacks with both. Well, I think we got a trade here. Don't think I'm really racing at the moment. Unless, let's say, I draw a mountain. I would take 7 down to 10. This would be 5, so I could hit for a 9 total, put them to 7. Even then, I'm probably okay with this trade. The Rimrock Knights, all right, that is quite a bit of damage here. So our opponent's down to 10. Knight can block, so we're gonna take a bunch of damage and then maybe the Emberth Paladin can do some work. Although that's a good blocker for it. Yeah, so playing this now is pretty bad in the face of the Squire. I guess Cauldron the Bone Crusher. I could send both. My opponent can trade Squire for Rat Cap, which I guess is acceptable. Yeah, I guess that's uh, probably the best outcome. And then there's a small chance that my opponent leaves themselves dead to my Paladin. It's not super likely though. If they just play their big tree folk, that blocks my paladin, so yeah. That's not great for me. Not sure how I uh, get out of this mess. 
I guess Paladin can just trade for the Tree Folk on defense. I can play double dummy. Then I have to chump block the Tree Folk, fall to one maybe. And then Paladin could maybe sneak in to kill them out of nowhere. So yeah, this is a tough choice. Like, do I expect my Paladin to win me the game as kind of a surprise attacker? Maybe that's my best chance here. I do have a carriage in hand, which could buy me some time against the Tree Folk as well, so I could play it slow and just try and trade off Paladin for Tree Folk and play the long game where I get to carriage. But I feel like this gives me a better chance. It's still pretty unlikely since any blocker they play basically invalidates this. But uh can hope they're on empty. If it's barge in, I'm dead regardless, and then they would have attacked right away. Could be the food pump spell, in which case, if that's the only card they have left, I could win. If I chum both, if it's like Carver or Rimrock Knights, then in the case of Carver, I'm dead anyway, since even if they just played as a blocker, I can't win. If it's Rimrock Knights specifically, I guess I could also survive by double chumping. So if it's Rimrock Knight or the Food Pump spell, it benefits me to double chump, otherwise I'm better off just chumping only Tree Folk. I don't know, they hesitated a bit too long, I think they don't have it. Adversary. Yeah, that blocks my Paladin, so can play Carriage, make a couple chump blockers but I'm gonna have to triple chump. I guess that could still work out. Triple chump, and then Rimrock Knight plus Paladin is still seven or eight. So if my opponent has no follow-up creatures and the attack with all three, I could be fine. I guess I could even crew the carriage as well with my Rimrock Knight. I think I should attack. Like, if I don't attack here, I potentially have four blockers. But this trade seems acceptable. So now Carriage could just trade up trade for the tracker. A mouse could chump tree folk and then Paladin plus Dummy would still be lethal if they don't have anything. Merchant to cycle. Interesting. Discards a land. Alright, so they can just play that as a blocker, which I guess messes with my plan a bit. Now Carriage could trade off for the tracker as well. So it's still close here. Thanks with both. Yeah, I think I crew the Carriage and trade for tracker. The alternative would be to double chump with the one ones. But that seems worse, knowing that they have a merchant as a blocker. Could also double block the tree folk and chum the tracker, is that better? I think I would rather have the extra chum blocker. They're both lethal anyway, so 6 versus 4 doesn't really make a difference. Right, I'll try this. But yeah, I needed my opponent to run out of uh, blockers here. Alright, well, that's uh, three damage, so I can put my opponent to one. Or I can just leave back the mouse, and um, I could even leave both chump blockers back to play around removal spell, but I think I should hit them just to get them low so that even the dummy is lethal by itself. I could also burn the tree folk, is that better? I think I should just get in the damage with the dummy, put my opponent to two and then both dummy and paladin are lethal. If they keep tree folk back, they're dead. If they attack with the tree folk and don't have removal, they're dead. Yeah, let's just kill this. So I'm dead to a lot of things, but uh, wow, are we going to do it here? Oof, 
That was a close one. The carriage with those chum blockers, pretty key. And my opponent just didn't have that final piece of interaction that they needed to get across the finish line. So we ended at uh, one life exactly. All right, for a note, that was a uh, that was a pretty exciting game. Let's uh, keep it up. All right, so we're on the play. This hand looks decent. Can potentially play turn four, Sir Kara. Could even have a hasty Sir Kara at some point. Opponent's got something for a single rat, could be... I think Bargen only targets attacking creatures, so that can be it. Can it be their own Rimrock Knights? Yeah, it could be their own Rimrock Knights. Which is fine, since it can block. Yep, there it is. So next turn I can play Sir Kara. Yeah, it could be the Ratcap melee as well, but it probably was just a knight. All right. So maybe missing land drops. And they didn't hit. Wow, that's unfortunate. Sir so Point stuck on two. Well, let's uh, hope that Sir Kara can uh, steal a quick win. Sadly, the Dragonfire is going to take Kara out of commission. Ooh, that's nice. Well, a 6-2 hasty Amberth Paladin is pretty strong. Points at 2 life, a Rimrock Knight can block and have 2 lethal threats. Plus a slipper can make any top deck creature into a lethal threat, so I'm liking my chances, but that's not gonna cut it. Alright, style points here. Gotta go for the hasty trebuchet. I guess it doesn't actually kill my opponent here. It's only one damage, but... How does a Crystal Slipper equipped onto a trebuchet turn it into a hasty trebuchet? Those are the real questions. Well, the deck's definitely performing a lot better than I had uh, hoped for. Let's keep it up. On the draw, only two lands, so that makes a robber Potentially a lot less powerful as well if we miss our land drops. Pretty expensive curve overall, but a third land goes a long way. I get to play Trebuchet, Ratcap. Ratcap plus Weapon Rack is great. And we do have a lot of two drops as well I could draw. And we're on the draw, so all those combined. I think we'll keep another turn one tracker. Well, we've been here before. So is it worth it to play Robber here, or should I sandbag it? Nah. Dummy also untaps the trebuchet later, so it makes more sense to keep that as well. And I'm happy trading 2 damage for even 2 damage if they play a non-human here. Ooh. Well, at least that's a human, so it doesn't pump the tracker, but it is. A very scary card. So would I w be willing to trade my Robber and a Rimrock Knight to kill Savvy Hunter? I think I am. So my opponent is of course not uh, guaranteed to block, in which case I probably just play Ratcap and let them make the food. So 
So they still get to make a food here regardless, but I think I'm happy getting rid of the Savvy Hunter here. And then probably play the Rimrock. Although playing a defensive dummy to potentially trade off for the tracker could also be reasonable. But black green's usually a bit more mid rangey top ends. So we're usually gonna be the aggressor in this matchup. At least we can attack into the tempting witch. And barrage is a good one to have in the back pockets. So we'll attack. And now Ratcap versus Trebuchet. So Trebuchet is better if I don't hit my land drop next turn, because then it synergizes with the Ratcap. Ratcap doesn't attack past the Witch. If I do find land for Weapon Rack, then the Ratcap could do a lot more damage. What's my opponent likely playing next turn? If they had a Witch Stalker, we would have seen it. They might have like a Bok Naughty to synergize with the food, which would be an issue, unless I can barrage it, which is going to take two more turns. Yeah, I guess I'll play the Trebuchet. Interesting attack. So you probably don't make this attack if you don't have a trick, otherwise the tracker is just uh, dying here. So Carver comes to mind, the food pump spell comes to mind, but making them use that pump spell this turn could still be okay, unless we can hope to just outrace the opponent and never have to block. But if it's the food pump spell plus five damage also represents a lot of damage. I think I can set up a better situation. Barrage is also an instant, so maybe I can punish them for it, even if it is unlikely. Opponent doing nothing that turn is promising, so if their hand is like all pump spells and expensive cards, I guess we could have a shot. Of course, they can sack a couple food tokens here to gain life. So here we're just gonna attack, trebuchet, play rat cap. And that's about it. And then hopefully pick up some lands for the rack. Fair enough. Now, none of these were knights, so that still doesn't explain this attack, so they probably still have a pump spell somewhere. So those trade. And opponent also gained three, so... Definitely a good exchange for them. Ooh, and a witch stalker presumably off the top. Yeah, that's a problem. And no attacks this turn. Now we're slowly inching closer to the Searing Barrage, which is going to be pretty important for us. Weapon Rack plus Rat Cap is decent. Although Witch Stalker now, if they have a pump spell still in hand, represents a ton of damage. So that's the scary part. I could Weapon Rack and then attack with the Raging Rat Cap. And then just offer the trade for the Witch Stalker straight up, while they don't have their pump spell up, and otherwise they're taking four. That could be reasonable, still have the trebuchet back. And then next turn I probably have to block the Wildwood Tracker with the trebuchet, and be okay with the pump spell killing the trebuchet. Opponent's gonna jump instead. That's fine. So opponent's respecting our damage outputs. Bit surprising given the three food tokens. Alright, fair enough. Still dies to the barrage and they don't have pump spell available unless they play land, which they did. I did draw the land for Barrage. I could play Carriage, and then I can crew the Carriage both in my turn and the opponent's turn, so I can put a counter on it with Weapon Rack, so it's a 5-5, and it can potentially trade off for the Witch Stalker, and I'm less upset if the Carriage trades for a Pump Spell. They could start activating the Witch here too. 
So I've got a bunch of options. I think I'm just going to put a counter here, attack, and kind of see what happens. Opponent takes it. Yeah, maybe I just wait for them to end of turn, activate the witch. And then I'm safe to kill the witch stalker. Alright, so that worked out. Forever Young get three creatures back. It's uh, pretty effective. Witch Stalker make a food to go with the witch. But now we can have a four power double striking rat cap, which is going to force them to chomp. So it's not so bad. And they're going to put the Savage Hunter first, which makes sense. And then they can still sack a food, which means they wouldn't die, but now the Rimrock Knight means they would die. The witch can put me to four, but I'm still not dead on board. So I don't have to use the weapon rack here, because it would still die to the Rimrock Knight even if they gain three. So maybe that means I should save the weapon rack to put somewhere else, potentially. So I'll just send Ratcap. And hope my opponent doesn't block. They will chump. Get a food. They can also sack two foods to draw a card, of course, but... And then the place probably a rat cap plus dummy. And then put the last counter from the rack on the rat cap. I guess I can wait. There's no harm in waiting. Or I could play carriage. Having two rat caps to combo with the Rimrock Knight seems better. So I think I want to get another rat cap out there. And then I can save the weapon rack even though we know what they're drawing, and I'm probably going to put the counter on the other rat cap, but maybe my draw step can change that. So yeah, I'm at essentially at one life here with double witch. Land the draw. So opponent can go up to nine life, and they have two blockers. Let's say I attack with everyone, putting counter on rat cap. Let's say they block the 3-4 rat cap with the Witch Stalker. Maybe I'm better off actually putting the counter on the bigger rat cap so it attacks profitably into the Witch Stalker. And I think I'm fine putting it on the smaller one. This is only at sorcery speed. I think I'm fine putting it there. Because they still have to respect the dummy as well, which I can pump twice. So they might block that with a witch, which then I can just bomb the dummy. So this should work out fine, I think. And I can always play the carriage as a blocker as well for the witch stalker if the witch dies. I can give this plus two, which would hit for eight, which is not enough for lethal, since my opponent would go to one. Uh, yeah, I can let first strike damage happen first. Doesn't really matter, but maybe they'll activate the witch. In which case, I can go for a lethal rat cap anyway. Alright, so now I can just go for the Rimrock Knights and that should be game. So yeah, tricky timing decision there. Opponent gets priority before first strike damage. And then once they activate the witch, we still get a window to response. But if we, of course, go for the pump spell first, then my opponent knows to sack the food and gain life instead. So they had to make a decision, but we had the insta speed pump spell to punish them for it. Alright, 6 0. Oh. Definitely going a lot better than expected, since uh, the draft didn't really leave a great impression, but. Uh, yeah, final boss. Let's go. Yeah, the sand looks good. On the play with the robber, which can hope to find me some extra cards, and then our two adamant cards with four lands already. Hoping to pick up a three drop to round out our curve. 
got a couple twos and threes to do the job. Well, let's hope this robber of the rich survives. I guess, yeah, the red cap melee would actually be good since it's targeting a red creature. Right, just uh, land, sadly. I guess merchants of the Vale makes sense too. Could be it. Flutterfox. Alright, I mean... I can still get an attack in. And potentially get a card from my opponent. And it's not the worst to trade it for Flutterfox at the end of the day. So sure. I should go full control here. In case I picked up like an instant speed removal spell, which I kind of did, but I'm not gonna bother bouncing here. So yeah, this runaway together is gonna be exiled forever. Since I don't think we have any other rogues. So best case scenario, my opponent doesn't play a blocker and I get to smash them with a paladin, but more realistically, we'll play the Ogre Errant first, and then the Ogre Errant can give Paladin Menace. Yeah, and there's a Merchant that we kind of suspected. So I could attack, pump Dummy, and use my entire turn trading Dummy for Merchant, but that seems pretty bad since it's going to slow me down too much. So I'm just going to play the Errant. There's a small chance my opponent wouldn't block if I attacked with the Dummy, if they value their Merchant highly. But I don't think I want to take that risk when the curve of Ogre into Amberth Paladin is so powerful. Alright, that's uh, unfortunate. Hoping the Merchant attacks. It's probably not happening. Yeah, opponent is playing three colors since we did exile a blue card. So they are getting pretty greedy with their mana base potentially. Oh, please attack. Yes. Rimrock Knights. Sure, deal. It's always nice when you get your free Lava Axe. And the Searing Barrage might just be enough to close out the game here. Rimrock Knight can block, so they need another creature here. Lots of opponents with Bone Crusher Giants in this draft. That's definitely a good one, but Barrage still looks quite excellent. Can clear the merchants, and then Ginger Brute might be able to get across the finish line. So they might have a bunch of blue cards stuck in hand. Fireborn Knight, double strike, so I can't attack into it with the Jousting Dummy. But I can attack with Ginger Brute. And Trebuchet is a good one to close out the game too. So I have two evasive uh, win conditions with my opponent at three. There's a blue mana, so that might unlock a couple extra cards. Tomb Raiders, acceptable. Do gotta watch out for potential haste creatures that could block Ginger Brute here. But uh, if they don't interact, they are dead to a top decked knight to go with the trebuchet. Not quite. Construct. Make sure to put a stop on the end step so I don't forget to activate Trebuchet. And yeah, they need two answers here or a way to gain a bit of life. And that does it, sweet. So we got a clean sweep here. 7-0 with Mono Red. Well, the deck definitely overperformed, I think. Or maybe I just uh, don't know how to properly evaluate uh, red aggressive decks in this format. 
The deck seemed okay, but definitely not like an easy 7-0 win deck. Did definitely have some very close games along the way, where uh, maybe a different top deck from my opponent wins them the game, so definitely a lot of close games in there too. Which is Vengeance, pretty decent card. Pack one, pick one. Yeah, the Vengeance is powerful. Pumpkin is good. Cauldron's also always a safe pick as a colorless removal spell. Linden, not the most exciting card to build around. There's better payoffs for sticking to a color, but uh, Keeper of Fables has been pretty impressive so far. And there's a Matt Ratter, started our draft with a second pick Ratter, hoping to be Blue Red's draw 2, but ended up in a completely different deck. Uh, Return of the Wild Speaker, of course, great card. Searing Brush was probably our most valuable card in this draft, if we're being honest. So very good too, of course, if you're heavy red. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.